they should have stuck to the small screen. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst movies based on British TV shows. Am I right or am I right? Jesus. Before we begin, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be looking at films which, despite being inspired by successful TV programs, didn't quite hit the spot when adapted for cinema. Mr. Bean, are you presently on any kind of medication? Not that I know of. Well, you can certainly use some. Number 10, Kevin and Perry Go Large. Well, well we are DJs. Where did DJs go for the summer? Our beaver. And all girls who go to a beaver shag anyone. Harry Enfield and Chums had everyone smiling in the 90s, with one of its most popular characters being stroppy teenager Kevin, played by Enfield himself. That is so unfair! <laughs> Take it or leave it. All right! Now, all the stuff you need is over there. And as Kevin proved such a hit, they decided to give him and his sidekick Perry, played by Kathy Burke, their own spin-off movie, which follows the characters' quests to lose their virginities in Ibiza. Kev, look! The girls of our dreams! <laughs> Unfortunately, what worked brilliantly for brief sketches struggled to succeed for a feature-length film, although Kevin and Perry Go Large does have a cult fan base within the rave scene. <laughs> Number 9. Spooks the Greater Good We know about Harry's connection to your family, so we understand this may not be easy for you. A critically acclaimed show that lasted for 10 series, Spooks centred on the exploits of a team of British counter-terrorism agents. But Spooks the Greater Good, the film that followed on from the show, wasn't half as high octane or anywhere near as well received. There's no air cover, nothing. It's over. And that's despite bringing in Jon Snow himself, Kit Harrington. The flick now joins the likes of Terminator Genesis and Justice League as movies starring Game of Thrones cast members that flopped at the box office. You are joking. It's the only way, Will. Number 8. The Singing Detective Before finding his calling in acting life by portraying Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr.'s career was pretty hit and miss, as highlighted by 2003's The Singing Detective, a loose and lacklustre adaptation of the BBC serial. <laughs> Danny Jr. stepped into the role first filled by Michael Gambon, playing a bedridden author with a skin disease who imagines himself as a sleuth from his books. Despite a stellar cast including Mel Gibson, Robin Wright and Adrian Brody, this one never lived up to the name of the show. Danny, I put it, I put it in the thing, I put it up in the shoe boxes and I put it in the closet. Number 7. Absolutely Fabulous, The Movie Yeah, you know, it's about London's premier fashion PR. Yeah. <laughs> Fabulous. Some things are just best left untouched, as Absolutely Fabulous proves all too well. The 90s sitcom was perfect for its time, following the drunken, wild antics of middle-aged Adina Monsoon and Patsy Stone, expertly played by Jennifer Saunders and Joanna Lumley. Light! Light! Oh, light! Light! <laughs> However, the characters seem frustratingly out of place in 2016, with this flimsy film feeling fairly forced and only serving to dampen the fond feelings for AdFab's original small screen run. I've lost my job because of you, and now I am nothing as well. Number 6, The Sweeney. Looks like he's come out of retirement. I need a word. I'm jogging on. Regan, I said I need a word. Now. On paper, the big screen rendition of The Sweeney had all the right ingredients for success, with Ray Winston taking the lead and director Nick Love, the man behind violent Brit flicks like The Football Factory and The Business, taking the helm. But you can go ahead and stick that paper in the shredder, because this was yet another letdown. Sorry for your loss. The film looked glossy and neat, but that simply took away from the grittiness of the 70s original. Generic action and a shallow plot did nothing to help matters either. And there's no place for a man like you in our community. Number five, Dad's Army. Uh, Captain Mannery. Hmm? Ah, morning, Vicar. Telephone for you. The old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, might be overused, but it sure applies in this case. Sit down. He's licking his lips. <laughs> He's licking his lips. Despite the show still being well loved, 
No one was exactly crying out for a modern take on Dad's Army, were they? And as this film shows, for good reason. Any, Any question? Mm. We need to pose. Starring Bill Nye and Catherine Zeta-Jones, among other established names, it's a reinterpretation that fails to recapture the magic of the original and, as a result, ultimately feels like a pointless update. Stellar cast aside, nothing of note stands out about the movie. You're better off sticking to reruns of the classic series. I thought I was gonna... My whole life flashed before my eyes. At least I think it was my life. Number four, Keith Lemon, The Film. I'm not with you because you're a disgustingly rich, successful businessman. Lee Francis' alter ego, Keith Lemon, was a standout in Bo Selecta and always entertains as host of Celebrity Juice. But headlining his own movie? Not so much. In fact, this film proved to be a complete mess that couldn't even claim to be funny in a so-bad-it's-kind-of-good way, which is really all it had to aim for. Hello, my name's Douglas. I'm going to London. Where are you going? London. And while lots of comedies are littered with cameos, Paddy McGuinness and Peter Andre don't exactly scream star-studded, do they? You know you're reaching when David Hasselhoff is the best you can offer. Number three, The Saint. You are named for John Baptist Rossi, a Capuchin priest who gave away all his possessions. After helping to drag Batman's reputation through the mud in Batman Forever, Val Kilmer returned a couple of years later to do the same with The Saint. Oh, it's so early. You guys want to get some coffee or something? Kilmer lacked the suave aura of Roger Moore, who played the character in the series, a part which actually went a long way to landing him the role of James Bond. With the sword in the hand and the foot on the neck of the dragon, eh? And an arm around the fair maid. The Robin Hood characteristics of the protagonist also fall by the wayside with Kilmer, as the lead is portrayed as just another thief for hire. Essentially, this film robs the saint of everything that made him interesting. Number two, Thunderbirds. Female? No, no. There is perhaps potential for a solid live-action movie based on Thunderbirds. Despite the original show consisting of performances by puppets, it still had heart and soul in abundance compared to this flat adaptation, which offered a live-action take and yet was ironically more lifeless. You're a formidable opponent, Lady Penelope, more than a match for most men. That's not saying much, then, is it? The central characters from the beloved series appear but take a back seat to a young cast serving as their offspring, in a widely criticised creative choice. Tellingly, even the show's creator slammed the film. Thunderbirds are no. Leave my son out of this. Number 1. The Avengers Not to be confused with the Marvel movie of the same name, which obviously proved an unprecedented juggernaut of success, this was the polar opposite of that. You're not someone who plays by the rules, Doctor. Rules are made to be broken. Not by me. 1998's The Avengers isn't just one of the worst films based on British TV, but possibly one of the worst films, period. With Uma Thurman and Ray Fiennes playing heroes and Sean Connery as the villain, the awkward, uninspiring and almost entirely entertainment-free adaptation was far more disappointing than it had right to be. Oh, this way. I know a back way in. Hacked to death in editing and hacked even further by critics, it was a box office bomb beyond redemption. Oh, do shut up! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.